Hey guys, Rex here. We got a question in from Mr. Raymond on Patreon. On Patreon, I take questions and answers daily. I'm going to share this one with you guys on YouTube that have been wondering what we're doing over there. So this is a question about precision rifle shooting. Okay, um, If you guys ever want to do any of the training that we used to offer in person, this is the prerequisite to that now. Um, so you can join Patreon. The RX Classroom is specifically the tier for precision rifle shooting. We have a number of tiers there. Some are very, very affordable and some are priced about like a class would be priced, okay? But a question came in from Raymond. We'll answer this question. Normally this would only be for the RX Classroom, but I'm gonna share this one with you guys just so you can see what we're doing, okay? So hi Rex, hi Mr. Raymond, what's up? I hope all is well. I have two questions for you, okay? If I know the answers to both questions, I will give you the best I can. However, if I don't know the answer, I'll direct you towards whoever would know, depending on what you're asking. One shooting and one spiritual, okay? When So I'm, I'll do the shooting one here on YouTube. The other one, I'll read it, and then we'll probably do that on Patreon. When measuring your scope's height over bore, I understand it's the middle of the bore and the middle of the scope on a level plane, zero minute of angle. However... Where would you measure on the scope when there's a cant on the base? I'm currently running some long guns with 20, 30, and 40 minute of angle mounts. Would the scope height just be measured at the start of the ocular lens on that end of the scope or actually back where your physical eye would align with the scope or neither? Good question. So what he's asking about is for long range calculations, there's some trigonometry involved, obviously. But you got your bore axis here and you got the axis of your optic above that. And there's going to be an angle to where there's a point of intersection at some point. Then you have to see where your trajectory goes. In order to do the math, you need to have a pretty gosh darn as close as you can get it measurement of how high the axis, the center line of the scope tube is above the center line of the bore axis. That number, if you skip it in your ballistic calculations and the defaults are not matching what you have, it could throw you off at long range a decent amount. And if you're shooting small targets, it'll be critical. Okay, so that's a good question. So you're asking about a canted mount. So for long range applications, it's very common to have a, a scope base that has a taper to it to give you more adjustment for dialing your elevation, okay? Otherwise, you only have half the adjustment in your scope up and down if it's just pointed straight. But if you tilt it like this, now you have the entire adjustment range of your optic. So tilted scope bases are preferred for long range applications. If you guys have never taken long range training, that's something that's thoroughly explained in detail in our classroom. And pretty much everyone who does long range will be kind of aware of that. So tilted scope bases will come in 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or 40 minutes. So where do you measure your height above bore? Because if the scope is tilted, that means the front is gonna be closer to the bore axis, a smaller number than the rear end of the scope, which will be jacked up higher. Make sense? So this number will be shorter than this number. Which number do you plug in? So I'll give you the answer first, and then I'll show you the actual math to show you it's not really moving as much as you might think. If you get a tape measure and you actually measure the front and the back, it's a tiny difference, tiny difference, but it is there. So in your mount, you're in between the two rings, you're going to have the control group of the optic. That's where all your knobs are. Right in the middle of your control group is where I would measure. Or in the middle, of that's going to be approximately in the middle of your base. The reason is, if the front is lower and the back is higher, scope's going to be generally situated with that in the middle. That means this is your fulcrum, right? And so you're going to get the best measurement in the middle. Plus, that's where your control group, that's where the triangle begins anyways for that. However, how much is it actually different? So if you figure out the trig on a rifle scope, most rifle scopes are, what, 16 inches long-ish for the rifle scope, right? Let's say you're measuring the objective versus the ocular end. If you're measuring from the front of the scope, how far different is it going to be from the center of the scope, the control group? Let's say you did measure the ocular. Do you need to go adjust stuff? Well, from the control group, the middle of the scope to the front, on a 30-minute mount, for example, the 30-minute mount is half a degree of arc. There are 60 minutes in one degree of arc. So a 30-minute mount, you know, with a cant on it, is only half of a degree of arc. 
So if you get out your mathematics, here's some mathematics, okay? Basic trig. This is half a degree times pi over 180. It's going to give that number right there, okay? You take that number times how many inches you're looking at. And that's eight inches from the center of the scope to the edge. It's going to be that number right there. It's like 0 0.07 inches. So not even a tenth of an inch. So you're not going to probably see it on your tape measure. If you have a caliper, you're measuring that way. Could be a little better. Um, it's going to be twice that with a 60-minute base, which is one full degree. So one full degree times pi over 180 equals that that number. That number times 8 inches, same distance, is going to be just a little over a tenth of an inch difference, okay, from either the ocular side or the... Um, objective side from the middle. So like a tenth of an inch. The problem is, and I when I did laboratory work, it doesn't matter how precise the measuring tool is if you're not looking square at it. Like when you're reading the meniscus on a test tube, for example, you have to get your eyes perpendicular to that line. Otherwise your angle, like if you're standing above the test tube trying to read where the, the line is, you know what I mean? Uh, how, how far it's filled up. There's like little gauge or a rain gauge. If you're standing above it, it's going to be an angle and it's going to screw it up. You know what I mean? You, could, you need to get perpendicular to it. And most guys, when they're measuring scopes, are not aware of that. I watch them do it. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you got to back up and then get perpendicular to the part right directly 90 degrees to make sure the line on whatever measuring device you have whether it be a micrometer or whatever, or a freaking yardstick, doesn't matter. It needs to be perpendicular with your view. That's the critical part. That'll throw you way more off than these numbers, okay? Most guys' numbers are off, but it's not because their measuring tool is bad. It's because their method negated them being perpendicular to the reading of the line, okay? So get directly 90 degrees, from the center line of the bore, then move your eye 2.75 inches or whatever your offset is perpendicular to the bore axis versus the optical axis. So hopefully that answers your questions there. Measure it from the center, but the main thing is to get perpendicular with how you're reading and get how fine does it need to be? How fine does it let you type in the number? Get as close as you can, okay? Um, it's, the closer the better, right? In any of your most of uh, your long range data performance is, you know, how much your data is going to meet your reality. You guys can argue about which program or which math is slightly better, like this program versus that program. The slop actually usually comes from us gathering the inputs in the first place. So your input gathering needs to be precise. How you gather uh, your velocities, how you're actually measuring your distance to the target. Do not assume it's exactly 100 yards. I don't care if the sign says it's 100 yards, exactly how far is it actually, okay? And so those type of things we talk more about in the RX Classroom, which exists on Patreon in the RX Classroom. You can join us there. We're in the part of the class now where we're starting to really do some of the magic on exactly how to work out the statistics of your zero versus your dope that you gather for your long range range confirmations has to actually be compensated for for your statistical zero not for the zero for that day because your zero shifts due to a number of things all throughout time depending on a variety of things so your zero is going to fluctuate you have to log that and get a statistical data point for your zero but how do you drive that with the dope you gather for that day because when you're truing your dope at long range you got to sync it up so that's what we're working on right now in the RX Classroom. If you guys have any questions, join us in the RX Classroom. I'll leave a link below. Or the lower tiers, or the higher tiers. There's That's in the middle of our uh, uh, services on Patreon. So here's the second part of your question. <gasps> yeah, I'm reading the question, and I'm going to keep this private from YouTube. Okay, I'm going to ask this question on Patreon. And I'll, I'll get to your question. I'll record that one next, and we'll answer that for you. I hope this was helpful, dude. Um, and if you guys have any questions, join us on Patreon. It's less than a candy bar, okay? 
and the value that you're going to save through stupid purchases, the wasting of time, the sloppy procedures in trying to log stuff, but the stuff that's not important in chasing the white rabbit down the hole, but neglecting the elephant in the room, that stuff is where you're going to absolutely pay for it right out the gates. <laughs> and on the more important things in life, it'll pay for it in much bigger and much bigger values than, than you could count. Okay. So rock and roll. You guys have a wonderful day. Take care. Stay warm. Don't get buried in snow. Have a nice day. Rex out. If you guys are digging this content and would like to nerd out even farther, please check out the Patreon page. We have five different levels available. The top two are actually completely full, but the bottom three levels do have some open slots. We cover a variety of content from the good book, music, news, everything in between. Thank you very much to the patrons who are there and take some time to at least check it out. We have a lot more content on Patreon than we actually have on YouTube.